If you ask any non-reasoning model how many words are in the sentence that you are about to generate, it will most likely not get it correctly. However, it's not because LLMs suck at counting tokens, but because the way they are designed, which is predicting one word at a time from left to right, makes it incredibly hard to predict its own future generations. And this right here is the biggest flaw that the current next token prediction paradigm has for LLMs. So one of the current hot topics to overcome this left to right prediction problem is using a new architecture called diffusion language models. And instead of predicting tokens one by one from left to right auto regressively, you would have this fixed window and the model would basically fill up all the tokens all at the same time. So when predicting a new sentence, every token will have a say about each other and not just the ones that already exist on the left side. So by generating with all the tokens in mind, it'll guarantee a structured integrity of the output. But this huge architectural jump from transformer to diffusion LM may just be too big of a leap because the success so far with generating with next token prediction is already engineered to a level that it will be hard for diffusion LM to catch up. Well, some people do have some success with it, but I'll come back at a later date to cover that. And there is also bird that can attend to information bidirectionally, which can theoretically create a more accurate predictive process, but that seems unable to scale the same way like transformers. So to improve the foresights of the current LLMs, which is predicting words one by one, what if you shotgun your predictions for the next two, three, or even four tokens at the same time instead? But before we dive into it, with AI video generation rapidly advancing, but often held back by slow speeds, unrealistic results, and closed source ecosystems, getting actually good cinematic quality efficiently and locally is one of the priorities that has often been ignored. That's why I want to share with you about the upcoming release of the new version of LTX Video from LTX Studio. Their most advanced video generation model was just announced a few days ago. This model has brought an insane upgrade to AI video generation by delivering up to 30 times faster rendering without sacrificing cinematic quality. But most importantly, it is entirely open open source. It's loaded with advancements designed to empower creators and developers from experiencing blazing fast rendering speeds with up to 30 times faster than competitors thanks to its innovative multi-scale rendering architecture and optimizations, achieving highly cinematic realism, lifelike camera movements, with natural character motion and expressions. The details are sharp even in chaotic scenes and have physically accurate movement, and providing a suite of creative controls within their app LTX Studio, including start and keyframes, precise camera motion control and rapid 4x motion previews to accelerate your workflow. So even if you only have consumer grade GPUs, it is still not a stretch for you to run it yourself for free. And of course, the highlight of this is it being entirely open source on GitHub and Hugging Face under an open rail license. This means it's free for commercial use for businesses under 10 million revenue. So if you're ready to experience the next generation of AI video with incredible speed, quality, and open accessibility, check it out using the link down in the description. And thank you LTX Studio for sponsoring this video. Anyways, multi-token prediction, as its name suggests, predicts multiple future tokens once at a time. The logic behind it is unsurprisingly simple. Instead of just predicting the next token, t plus 1, based on the context up to t, what if we also have the model predict token t plus 2, token t plus 3, and maybe even token t plus 4 all at the same time? Because our current AI models, trained only to predict the very next token, are already top tier. So logically thinking, it shouldn't be that crazy to ask it to also predict the next few tokens simultaneously, right? The initial approach, which was proposed around a year ago, doesn't have much of a plot twist architecturally either. It uses a standard transformer model, which in this case is called the trunk, to process the input text and generate an internal representation for up to the current position T. The only part that is different is that instead of just one output head predicting the next token, there are multiple independent output heads that predict the next few positions in parallel. So the trunk is basically a shared backbone where all these heads take the exact same hidden state from the trunk and simultaneously predict the new tokens at their future corresponding positions. So one pass of the model basically shotguns four tokens at once, capable of speeding the process up by four times on paper. But don't shotgunning tokens make the predictive process a lot more imprecise, which is the complete opposite of what we want. The research itself even says that when predicting up to four tokens at once, its performance degrades very badly. It's like having four different people doing weather reporting independently for four different days without letting them communicate with each other which is completely the opposite of what we wanted in the first place and doesn't sound like a safe bet at all. However, it's more like the weather men were trained in the same educational system, so their predictions wouldn't be completely off from each other. And in fact, when the model is trained to predict multiple tokens at once, their structural and syntactic capabilities are increased by a lot. For coding, it seems like the larger the model size, the better this shotgun method works. For the largest model, it has an improvement of 1.7% up to 4.5% compared to the baseline across 
across two benchmarks. The scaling law for MTP also seems like it'll be a free performance boost. The same thing also happened with the Arc Challenge benchmark, which is an abstract reasoning challenge. It seems like the more tokens you predict at once, the better it performs, which is a pleasant surprise. And keep in mind, this also gets you three to four times speed up for token generation. It's actually so free. Multi-token prediction is actually not a complete fluke either. The researchers found that by analyzing just a single hidden state up to position T in a model, they could approximate the model's prediction for the subsequent T plus two tokens with up to 48% accuracy. So even if a model is only trained to predict the next T plus one token, their internal hidden states would still implicitly forces the model to develop some level of foresight. Maybe that's why the larger the model is, the more performance increase MTP will provide, because the larger models would have enough space internally to build these kinds of foresights which MTP promotes. So if this performance boost is so free, why have we not heard of any big AI labs using it? Well, actually, the current best open source AI model uses it. It's just that it got overshadowed by so many other unique features it has. To be honest, I didn't realize either when I was writing this video, it completely slipped my mind. But that's when I was using my new app findmypapers.ai to give me some ideas, which reminded me of the fact that DeepSeek v3 made a really cool implementation that took the best out of MTP to improve its model performance. Like if you scroll down in their paper, it was experimented and documented very well. So they knew models could inherently anticipate future tokens like what future lens have shown. They also knew that explicit MTP training could enhance the model's structural and syntactic capabilities to boost coding and reasoning performance. But the key downfall of using MTP is that there is a huge potential inconsistency issues with independent parallel heads. So you know what they did? They made MTP a training objective and infused its benefits into the main model, even when the main model ultimately just does standard next token prediction during inference. It completely changed the use of MTP as a prediction method into a powerful training tool. So what's different here is that instead of having those parallel independent heads, which is the most inconsistent part of MTP, DeepSeek v3 uses sequential MTP modules to make sure information can still be passed between T plus one prediction and T plus two prediction. How it works exactly is that after the main body of the transformer model finishes processing the input up to token T, producing a hidden state, let's call this H0, then the MTP process begins. They added this thing called sequential MTP modules, and the more modules here means the more tokens it'll predict. In this case, having one MTP module means predicting one extra token, so two tokens at once, and having three MTP modules means predicting four tokens at once. So unlike the standard MTP, which just directly predicts all the tokens simultaneously with their hidden state H0, every MTP module used for DeepSeq V3 also takes in the information of the last token during training. This combined representation then goes through a dedicated transformer block used to generate the second token. The output of this block is then fed again into a shared output head, which is the same one the main model uses to predict the second token. So with this logic, you basically don't need to rerun the entire model to get an extra token, and the overhead is just one additional transformer block for every extra token generated. And in DeepSeek v3's case, they have the model predict two tokens at once during training, and with this setup, it is able to maintain the causal chain during training. This avoids the inconsistency problem of the parallel heads, which going back to the weatherman example, means not only did they all go to the same educational system, but now the day two weather guy is also able to see what the day one guy predicted. And the key that made everything work here is that the learning signals, aka the gradients from the MTP module, didn't only train the MTP specific transformer blocks. The signals also flow back through the shared components like the output head and the transformer trunk that produced the initial hidden state H0. So this training setup for DeepSeq V3 explicitly forces the model to develop richer representations that capture longer range foresights, which would theoretically make the model have better pre-planning capabilities. But did that work and does it actually make a difference? Surprisingly, but not surprisingly, DeepSeq validated this method very rigorously in their ablation studies. They have a smaller 15.7 billion parameters and a larger 228.7 billion parameters model using only standard next token prediction as a baseline and compared to the same two models again, but trained with one MTP objective, which was then discarded after, with the results showing that the models trained with the MTP auxiliary objective consistently performed better almost across the board. This shows that using 
using MTP purely as a training technique would basically enhance the core capabilities of the language model itself with barely any compute overhead. But the cherry on top is they also found that by keeping the one MTP module during inference and use it for speculative decoding, which basically means the model is predicting two tokens at once, it could achieve a 1.8 times speed up in tokens per second. And on top of that, the second token prediction was highly accurate, sitting at a 85 to 90% acceptance rate. So DeepSeek V3's approach is a very clever way to harness the core idea of multi-token prediction. It sidesteps the potential pitfalls of parallel MTP while still taking the best out of it, which overcomes the limitations of the simple next token prediction. Very creative, right? And yeah, that's it for this video. If you like this kind of research deep dive, I highly recommend my newsletter where I cover the latest and the juiciest research papers like MTP Weekly. In it, you will be completely up to date on the latest AI research developments and all the papers which I don't have the time to cover will all be on there. So go check it out if that's your cup of tea. And thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Degan, News Research, Kanan, Robert Zaviasa, Louis Muck, Ben Shaner, Marcelo Ferraria, Zane Sheep, Poof and Inu, DX Research Group, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.